So we're going to have a look at different forms of carbon. We've already looked at diamond and graphite, and we're going to look at three other forms of carbon, all of which are actually um, quite new um, uh, forms that we need to know about. Uh, so the first one of which is graphene. Now, the word graphene is very similar to the word graphite. Uh, and in fact, graphene is just a single layer of graphite. So we've already seen the structure of graphite. Uh, but if we remind ourselves about it, then in graphite, we've got a, a giant covalent structure. So we've got lots of covalent bonds. But within that structure, every carbon atom is bonded to three others in a hexagon type shape, or hexagon structure. Um, now, that um, has some really important uh, features. Uh, we know that uh, each carbon atom has got a spare electron and that spare electron is delocalized so let's just think and we'll come back to that in a moment so let's think about um, what both of these uh, things mean with a single layer of graphite so because we've got a single layer of graphite it's incredibly very thin so uh, graphene is semi see-through or semi transparent so light can get through it and that's going to be very important for future uses of it uh, because it's graphite it also conducts electricity or conducts heat and electricity well now we've seen with graphite and both graphite graphene why that is so uh, each carbon atom has a um, spare or delocalized electron so we've got delocalized electrons in the structure and these can uh, flow through the structure and if they can throw through the structure they can carry uh, uh, carry a current or charge so that's why uh, graphene like graphite is able to conduct electricity it's got it was um, discovered uh, relatively recently in 2010 and in fact earned a Nobel Prize there are a couple of uses uh, potential uh, future uses of graphene that are being investigated at the moment. Uh, one of them is for touchscreens, so mobile phone, tablet, computer touchscreens. Um, another one is to strengthen um, uh, materials, so particularly looking at carbon fibre type materials, at strength, strengthening those. So graphene, which is a single layer of graphite. I'll leave that there for a moment if anybody wants to pause the video and take any notes. So our second structure is a fullerene. And I'm going to use a pre-printed diagram of this because it's quite difficult to draw. Um, fullerene. It's named after a Buckminster fullerene. And these were discovered in the late 19, uh, 1980s or 1990s. And again, actually involved... Uh, the um, uh, main lead scientist who discovered them, uh, Sir Harry Croteau, uh, receiving a Nobel Prize. Um, they are molecules with the formula C60. So if we look at this structure here, what we've got is carbon atoms here, and these bonds between them represent covalent bonds. So they're arranged, uh, well, the molecules are very much like balls, so we can think of them like footballs, and in fact, like soccer balls. Uh, if you look here, we've got a, a pentagon, a five-membered ring, and then around here, a six-membered ring, a six-membered ring, a five-membered ring, six-membered ring, six-membered ring. So it's a very much like you, you would you'd see the stitching on, on a soccer ball. Um, and there are actually a whole family of molecules. Um, so there's carbon-60, but the next two up, uh, carbon-70, and carbon 84, which won't, won't quite be um, ball shaped, but, be, will, but, but, but will be uh, similar. So they are molecules. The simplest one that we need to know is with the formula C60. Um, they have a structure similar in some ways to, uh, to graphite um, having um, rings, but um, they don't conduct electricity, and that's very important. Do not conduct electricity because they are effectively very large molecules. So again, each carbon atom is bonded to three others, the same as graphene and graphite. Um, 
they have got some uses or some uses that are being investigated, uh, particularly useful um, as uh, lubricants. Also as catalysts, so things that speed up chemical reaction. And one of the main uses that are being discovered at the moment is to deliver drugs. And what we mean by that, uh, deliver drugs to specific parts or cells in the body. Now, what that means is that um, we can modify these structures and we can trap inside the balls um, some drugs or some pharmaceuticals, uh, particularly uh, uh, ones that will treat cancers. And then we can attach molecules to these, which will make them um, uh, target particular parts of the body. But what we really need to know is, is there's three potential uses there. Uh, they're lubricants, catalysts or as drug delivery. So just as a quick summary, fullerenes are molecules with the formula carbon-60. They're arranged as balls. They do not conduct electricity. And like graphite and graphene, each carbon atom is bonded to three others. So I'm going to look now at our final uh, form of carbon that we need to know about, and that is carbon nanotubes. Again, I'm using a picture. Uh, because it would be quite difficult to draw, it would take me a long time to draw. So carbon nanotubes. We can imagine these either as being a sort of a, a tube version of a fullerene, or in fact, um, we can think of them as being tubes of graphene. Uh, sorry, tubes of graphene. So if we took uh, graphene sheets and started wrapping them around, and we end up with this tube-like structure. Um, uh, again, because it's similar to graphite and graphene, um, it's a good conductor of heat and it's a good conductor of electricity. The reason it's a good conductor of heat and electricity, again, is because we have a delocalized electron or delocalized electrons, one per carbon atom, and these are able to flow through the structure and carry a charge or uh, fl throw a flow across the tube surface. Um, we also need to know uh, again that um, each carbon atom is bonded to three others. So that's another key feature again in uh, similar to graphene, graphite and fullerenes. Um, but one of the really important things about carbon nanotubes is they have a very high tensile strength. And what that high tensile strength means is they're going to be very important in the future at reinforcing lightweight building materials. Good. Thank you very much.